If you replace one CF, one incandescent bulb with a CFL bulb, we can save as much uh, energy as 800,000 cars over the course of a, a single year. So, I mean, that's not a big effort, and it's something that all of us can, can you know, commit to that, I think, because what's the big deal? I mean, one problem that has been raised is what about the mercury that's contained within this, those CFL bulbs? And most towns that, that uh, think about these things, that actually commit to it, have come up with a way to recycle those bulbs so that the mercury does not get into either the groundwater or into other places where it doesn't belong, which includes the human body, as was pointed out earlier. Reduce paper consumption and use recycled where possible. Well, that's pretty much self-explanatory. I think a lot, of thing, a lot of times people don't think about uh, the option of double siding, the option of uh, using smaller margin, margins, smaller fonts. All of these things would contribute to less paper use. I think probably the best one in large organizations or even small organizations is to use either the internet or intranet for paper routing. You know, rather than actually printing something out, which somebody pointed out to me the other day, we probably use about a copy box full of paper every day in this building. And I'm sure there are other institutions that use more than we do. Although at a law school, I think maybe we probably are one of the bigger consumers. Uh, reducing carbon footprints. A lot of times people ask me, well, you know, how do you go about doing that? And I think Pat Parento and others have talked to this already today. Um, you know, there are options, whether it's a, a Toyota Prius or the Honda Insight or a number of other cars. In fact, I mean, these days I think it's humorous, and I'm sure that the folks who talk about uh, uh, debunking the deniers today will address this. The car companies you'll notice nowadays, you know, you watch TV and you say, oh my God, it's another ad by another either oil company or car company saying how green they are and how committed to, the, to what they are. Well, I'm sorry, but how, why did it take you so long? And you know, that's more of that, that feeling in Detroit and places like that where industry just says, well, we've done things this way for so long, what's the incentive to change? And unfortunately, they don't have enough of incentive to change. And that's why we in our buying decisions need to say, I don't want the SUV. I don't want a huge car. In fact, I don't need it. I mean, I, these days, I, my, my family doesn't really like me for this that much because there are six of us, but I put all of us into a Honda Fit to drive somewhere. We got rid of the SUV. <laughs> and the Honda Fit doesn't really fit all six of us, but it's still a nice car, and we get about twice the gas mileage that we did when we had the SUV. Uh, consider where goods come from before buying. I mean, I think that's obviously an important issue. Uh, I think it was briefly touched on earlier, but when you think about it, the average meal in the United States, I don't know, anybody have a guess as to how far that tra might travel? 1,500 miles. <laughs> It was a good guess, but I mean, when you think about that, and, and what I like to think about is, you know, how many Americans really need raspberries in February? And you know that that didn't come from someplace local. We're importing those things from Chile and South America and various other places around the world, rather than just eating whatever is available to us here. And I sp spoke to somebody who lives in my neck of the woods up in uh, New Hampshire near Concord, and she said, you know, canning is coming back into vogue, and you know, why shouldn't it? You know, if we can grow perfectly good produce here on the farms and other places that we have available to grow stuff, why not grow that stuff in the summertime, put it into cans, and have it available to you in February? Sure, it doesn't taste as good as a uh, South American raspberry, but it's still perfectly good and good for you. Um, let's see. Implement new sustainable methods of op operation. Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that I think, you know, you ought to get in touch with those people that either you work with on a daily basis or in your own operations. Um, there are ways, as I think Joe uh, has pointed out extremely well today, that, you know, you, you can either follow the lead design, and as he also pointed out, you don't have to put up a new building in order to implement lead standards. You can retrofit older buildings. And you know, it, it, even though an architect might not draw the design for a new building, you can still take these lead principles and apply them to a building such as this one, which is one of those things that we're, we're going to get a petition drive together and maybe go to Professor Coyne one day and say, hey, you know, maybe we could invest in solar panels on the roof of this thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't say that. Take that back. Uh, spread the word. You know, obviously, uh, somebody pointed out earlier that, you know, how do we get, how do we convince people that this is the kind of thing we need to do? Well, if you don't do it from the grassroots level, believe me, and I, I think that uh, the, the one person who's from my old hometown would, <laughs> would convince you of, it's hard to get to work through that political process. And one thing I didn't point out earlier about that is that, Obviously, you know, global warming is one of those issues that even though it might be 100 years down the road, the scientists have pointed out that 
that keeps moving back. You know, what used to be uh, a consequence that would be in 100 years, they're now saying might be 30 years down the road. Well, that's beginning to get more in the window of opportunity that politicians look at, but it's still nowhere near close enough. Because those guys, whether in their House of Representatives in the federal system, they have to run for office every two years. What does it matter to them? Can you go to them and say, look, you know, we have a problem that's going to be really serious in 30 years when they're so concerned with, you know, their first year might be actually doing something for their constituents, but the next year is always thinking about, where am I going to come up with the money for the next election? You know, they're, they're driven by that, that need for money, so they're not thinking long term. And that's something that we have to convince them of. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law the leader of reform in legal education, and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.